the oldest and strongest human emotion is fear. And the oldest and strongest type of fear is trepidation of the unknown. When we were children, our parents told us that monsters didn't exist. But we were sure that something was lurking under the bed or in the closet. Fear sees even if our eyes are closed. Welcome to the realm of the arcane. My name is Lon Strickler. Join me as I examine unexplained creatures, strange manifestations, and remarkable realities. Imagine this next hour as a voyage of discovery to strange lands, seeking not for new territory, but for new knowledge of the supernatural. Come on board as we begin this adventure together. Hey folks, good evening and welcome to another episode of Arcane Radio, where we explore the unexplained here on the Paranormal King Radio Network. I'm your host, Lon Strickler, coming to within a cannon shot of historic Gettysburg in the cryptid Mecca of Pennsylvania. I thank you for joining me. So let's get right into the show. Uh, tonight I'm joined by two members of the Phantoms and Monsters 14 research team. Tobias Whalen is an investigator and researcher who is based in Madison, Wisconsin. His group is the Singular Fortean Society, which can be found at singularfortean.com. Along with his talented wife, Emily, he investigates a variety of unexplained incidents throughout the upper Midwest and regions surrounding Lake Michigan. Timothy Renner is an investigator and podcaster uh, uh, who's based in York County, Pennsylvania. His website can be found at strangefamiliars.com, where you can also find his podcast. Tim is an, the author of several books that contain his research and case logs. Both of these gentlemen are part of a well-rounded and knowledgeable team that includes Butch Wachowski, Sean Forker, Emily Whalen, Troy Knoll, Vance Nesbitt, Rob Shaw, and psychic medium Brett Butler and remote viewer Delise Cook. So, guys, thanks for joining me tonight. Thanks for having me, Lon. Yeah, thanks for having me. Always great to be on Arcane Radio. So, uh, let's get right into it. Um, Tobias, what uh, what have you been working on aside from uh, the Fortean Research Team? So, sort of outside of the Lake Michigan Mothman stuff? Yeah. Well, you know, interestingly, uh, Emily and I had an opportunity last weekend to go to Farrar, Iowa. If you haven't heard of it, that's pretty normal. It's a, a small, unincorporated uh, town just outside of Des Moines, like, like that area. And they have this schoolhouse there, um, which I believe was built in 1922. And it was uh, actually an inactive schoolhouse uh, until just after the turn of the millennium, so 2001, 2002. And in 2006, it was bought by a couple, and, and they originally intended to, uh, you know, uh, fix it up, use it for, um, you know, just as a venue. So, like, uh, uh, weddings and, and uh, receptions, things things like that. And, you know, they, they almost immediately had a series of, of strange um, paranormal events. Uh, I, I believe one of them that, that really st stood out was the wife was on the, the, the stairs and she felt some, uh, some kind of presence and um, uh, she, you know, she was, she was pushed and, um, and it, it, it turns out that, and a lot of these stories I wasn't able to, to confirm, but there had been some sort of history of, uh, um, people reporting paranormal phenomena throughout sort of the, the, the school's history, which I, I don't think is a huge surprise to anybody considering, you know, it's, it's age. And so we were invited there by uh, uh, Fox Valley Ghost Hunters, and, and they were putting on a, a combination uh, conference and investigation. And so we got to go and um, 
investigate there Friday and and Saturday, and it's a it's a pretty interesting place. Um, originally, we were going to stay overnight both nights, but I'm sure as you guys remember, um, you know it was well over 100 degrees with the the heat index up into you know 110 degrees or something. Uh, Nothing worse than an old house on a hot day. <laughs> Yeah, well, this is an old schoolhouse too. It's even yeah. like even uh, uh, ventilated worse than a, a, a normal house, honestly. Right. And so, you know, like that that idea didn't last very long. So we ended up getting a, a hotel, but you know, we had unlimited access. So we we stayed pretty late both nights. And um, and you know, like like I said, even though uh, even having done some some actual digging, like we were never able to. Uh, really confirm uh any of the the reports attached to that place uh insofar as there weren't a lot of witnesses on the record or 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 even really uh stories by a lot of established investigators that had you know published things at least under their own credibility and you know, there's probably going to be a dozen people after this that come out and say, well, uh, you didn't look at this or I wrote this or, and hey, awesome. That would be great. I would love to read about it. But before we went, we weren't able to to find any of that stuff. And and I, I, I didn't really find a whole lot of it once we were there either. But we did have some, some interesting results. So I don't know how you guys feel about those uh, ghost boxes or, or uh, uh, spirit boxes. I had never actually worked with one before, uh, but uh, there were a, a, a couple of guys there, uh, Katie and, and Doug from uh, Supernatural Inc., and they hand make these these spirit boxes. Uh-huh. Um, and, uh, and, you know, we're thinking, well, you know, what the heck, right? Like, we're here, we're with these ghost hunting teams, they've got experience using these ghost boxes, they swear by results, so, you know, we, we, we might as well use them. And um, some of the results were fairly surprising to me. You know, I, I never have really placed a lot of faith in any of the the sort of uh, technical mumbo jumbo that that, that people um, will will use. You know, during paranormal in- investigation. You know, all of the stuff that sort of uh, found its its popularity through um, reality television, but. You know, this is this is something that I, I I think we might actually try on 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 our own going forward. Actually, we've we've placed orders with uh, with KD uh, for for him to make us you know uh, yeah. uh, two of his two of his ghost box uh, ghost boxes. But anyway, so uh, we we did have some some interesting results. Uh, you know, we were upstairs in the auditorium on the first night and. We were sitting in a, a, a circle, you know, lights out, and, um, you know, people were asking questions to this box, and, um, you know, I I swear that that it was giving some kind of in, intelligent and intelligible responses, um, and I, you know, I, I don't know if some of that was, was confirmation bias, but, you know, it, it really felt in that moment like we were communicating with something. And so this thing comes through and, you know, says it's it, its name is Philip. And, uh, you know, people sort of surmised that it was a, a possibly a student there at one time. I, I, I don't really know. Um, and, uh, and yeah, you, you know, we had a little conversation kind of. And um, it was it was more than... I think, you know, we would normally expect to get on in investigation as far as something that, you know, say we could show an audience, something that I could record and be like, hey, you know, look at this. What do you what do you think about this? Right. And and there were a few incidents like that. I mean, you know, Emily and I had some of the the stuff that that we would expect personally. Um, It's you know, it's just so difficult to relay a feeling through through video or or audio or anything um yeah. you know so when we had a an, an odd feeling or 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 maybe we would we would see a, 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 a shadow person or something um it's difficult to, to to capture that stuff and so i just thought it was interesting how the um the ghost box sort of you know brought a little more life but you know be because they had, 
you know, other people had brought things like, you know, the EMF detectors and, and stuff like that. And I, you know, you're wandering around in an, in an old building. Um, you know, I, I, I could see how there would be a lot of false positives on, yeah. on something like that. I, I, I really do. I mean, with, with, with old wiring and, 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 and just everything else. I mean, heck, honestly, like there are, are natural uh, EMF fields that, that can occur. And there's just a, a lot of different things that could go wrong, um, which personally I think is probably why they gain so much popularity because it's so easy to find in EMF field pretty much anywhere you are that, you know, you're going to get a lot of that confirmation bias by well, Especially in an older, older location that's got oh, wiring. Exactly. Oh yeah, yeah. Ab- absolutely. You know, like we were in the uh, Al Ringling Mansion a few years ago, and you know we had some some interesting electrical you know phenomena there. And I don't know that it wasn't related to some sort of natural event. I mean, there was there was a, a, a lightning storm happening. Yeah. yeah, like that house is it's old as hell. It's it's got a bunch of like uninsulated wiring in it. I mean, who knows? And I'm sure this this school was was. Uh, no better because it clearly hadn't been renovated. I, it, it didn't take them very long after the um, initial event experienced by the, the, the wife on that uh, staircase for them to decide that they were going to use this for, you know, paranormal events and investigations and things. Um, but, you know, honestly, more interestingly than that uh, initial auditorium session and, 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 the um, the actual investigation that evening it, it, it went on for a while uh, there, there 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 were some other interesting results but I think probably the most fascinating thing for me was on Saturday uh, there's this this creepy old boiler room and um, and we we are uh, down in there and, and and you know Katie's got his his ghost box and and we're we're asking questions and it was another situation with this uh, piece of equipment where, you know, I, I swear we're, we're getting some kind of intelligible response and, and it was creepy. You know, I don't get creeped out a lot on investigations. You know, I, 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 I always have that sort of um, autonomous, you know, sort of startle response that you really, like, you can just never get rid of. It's, it's automatic. There's nothing you can do about it. But as far as like really getting creeped out, that, that, that never happens. But, you know, I was creeped out here. Um, started asking questions and getting responses through this box from something that, and I, you know, in hindsight, outside of that moment, it, it honestly sounds a little silly, but, but bear with me here we start getting responses from this thing that uh, is telling us that the master is, is coming and, you know, and and people are asking who is the master and, 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 and this, that, and the other, and, and we're just getting all kinds of, of strange responses. And it seems very, you know, uh, very much like it's avoiding that, that question and just sort of toying with everybody. And, um, and it, it was just creepy. You know, I, 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 I don't know how else to, to, to put it, and I don't think probably I'm doing it a lot of justice by, by just talking about it. Yeah. It really is one of those things where we've we've got this footage that, you know, because we were recording, um, and so, like, we've got this footage that, that we'll get edited and, and, and everything, and, and we'll put it together and probably put it up on Patreon or something. And, um, but yeah, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was something else. So, that was a lot of fun. You know, um, we try to get out into the field as, as much as possible, but you know, it, it can be tough. And, you know, so it was, it was nice to be able to, to travel a little bit, uh, get out somewhere we'd never been before. And, um, and, uh, you know, it experienced some, uh, you know, pretty convincing evidence of, of, uh, uh, paranormal activity. Those ghost boxes, you know, I'm I'm really really interested in them. I re- I want to get one for myself. I you know, someone has said to me before, well, you know, how do you know it's it's ghosts? And I my reply is, well, you don't. You don't right. know it's ghosts. But they're like, well, you're just doing that with your mind. I'm like, okay, that's still really really interesting to me. You know. 
Oh yeah, I mean that was you know the, uh, I uh, I actually had a, a conversation with a couple of guys there. I mean basically about exactly what you're talking about, Tim, and it's that um, yeah. I mean you 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 don't know with with what you are communicating, and and even if somehow yeah, I mean like through some unknown psychic mechanism, you know, like you are are subconsciously. Uh, uh, influencing this device, I mean, that's pretty amazing. Exactly. Yeah, to me, it's it's no less fascinating and no less worthy of uh, experimenting with because if you get different results depending on these, you know, in these haunted ro- locations than you would somewhere else, well, that that should tell you something as well. It, it, they're they're very interesting tools, I think. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm I'm very much looking forward to to getting ours. You know, we. We talk to um, Jay Bachochin, you know, pretty pretty frequently. He's a he's he's a good friend, and um, you know, we 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 want to get those out to the Kettle Moraine Forest actually, because that place, um, I think we could get some interesting uh, results there. I mean, because it's not, I mean, uh, Kettle Moraine to me isn't great evidence for. Bigfoot as an undiscovered ape, and I, I'm, I'm sure Tim probably has a lot to say about this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's 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 way weirder. It's so much weirder, and um, with all of the associated, you know, high strangeness phenomena present, um, if you know these ghost boxes do represent some, uh, you know, medium that can be influenced by. Uh, you know, otherworldly consciousness in in some way, then you know, I I would think that the Kettle Moraine State Forest would probably be a pretty good place to to test that. Yeah, you know, I, I'm always dubious about this electronic equipment and all the new stuff that comes out mm-hmm. as far as being used in paranormal investigations. You know, <clears throat> you know first we have well, the the spirit box has been out for a while now, but. Uh, you know, you got the Oculus, and then you got a lot of renditions on this this ghost box thing, or mm. what they call Frank's box originally. Right. I um, I don't know. You know, I've gotten a lot of arguments with people about that, and uh, you know, I I don't I personally don't hold a lot of credibility to it. But you know, who knows? Oh, sure. I mean, I sort of the the way I look at it is. You know, there, there's not anything necessarily special about it, I guess, that, that makes it work better than any other uh, divinatory method. Mm. Um, I, I, I just think that um, it is, you know, the type of method of divination that would allow for the results thereof to be easily translatable to somebody else. I mean, I can, I can cast runes, you know, and, and get a pretty clear message from that. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's so open to interpretation that if, you know, even if I have a camera pointing at it, people will go, well, I mean, you can see anything you want in there, which is a pretty fair assessment. If I manage to capture, um, you know, something on a a ghost box answering a, a question or something, I, Again, I don't think there's any necessarily uh, intrinsic uh, capability of of that over some other type of uh, or you know of device or or method, but mm. it it just gets it in a way where I I would be able to at least try to show it to people. But you know, I honestly don't have a lot of experience with it at this point. So I had one cool weekend, and, <laughs> and, you know, and maybe that'll be it. Yeah, I, that, that's one good thing. So, uh, Tim, what have you been personally working on? Oh, this heat's been just putting a damper on I know. Me. It's it's a bitch. It really is. It's I have not been getting out much, but I did get out last week. Um, and there's a really cool cemetery in Columbia, Pennsylvania. It's, uh, it, I mean, it's completely private at this point, and it's uh, taken care of by, you know, individuals, a group of individuals and so forth, but mm-hmm. uh, was able to gain access to the cemetery. And I did a book signing there last week, so I didn't get a chance to check it out too much. Although I did have some interesting things, and a guy that was with me got a uh, a pretty interesting recording. Um, his cell phone was recording. He didn't even know it was turned on, and he came home with a recording of 
of a, a you know it's just a second or two but it's just a pretty interesting little clip that he got but uh, I, I wrote to the people and I asked if I could get access uh, to that again and uh, so they gave me access and I'm going back this weekend so oh, that real, sounds good yeah real excited for that so I can be there at night so on the Bigfoot front or whatever's out there running around through the woods what what's been going on with you in your area Oh, it's been a slow year. You know, last yeah. last summer was I was getting calls every month. One month, I think, last summer, uh, either either the end of the spring or early part of summer, I got three calls from York County in one month, which mm-hmm. is you know that's pretty good for for Bigfoot calls. Um, this year, just it's been just kind of dead. Yeah. I got a call back in January, and then there was uh, the woman you turned me on to in Mar- in Maryland, just over the line. Um, the uh, in Conowingo there, um, so that was what. Has there been a follow up with that? Uh, she said it's been quiet. She said it's been real quiet. Um, Beth, that was her name, right? Right. Um, she said it's been real quiet there. Uh, nothing to report because I was going to go out one night. Um, you know, she said I was welcome to come out at any time. Um, I was going to go out and, you know, just you know spend the night there not not the whole night but you know mm-hmm. in, into the late evening and and she said really there's just been nothing and she talked to her neighbor her neighbor was having you know frequent semi-frequent encounters and so forth with with odd stuff and he said it's been quiet so i said well maybe i'll just put it off until you know after this heat's done and mm-hmm. uh, and I'll, I'll come out again so um the most interesting thing about that and did we talk about that before on here i don't know if we did or not i don't know lay it on me man so I went out there, and uh, she works with the public. I'm not sure how much information you know she would want us to give out, but she she works with the public locally, mm-hmm. and she had talked to all of her neighbors and just gotten all these stories. It was like a a little you know mini town hall she put on for me when uh, when I came out there, and she had you know her neighbors over, and they're talking about all these different things they experienced. She her husband saw something. Now she originally saw what she described as a big black wolf. That's what she saw. She didn't see Bigfoot. And it was quadrupedal, whatever she saw, but she said it was absolutely huge. And then, uh, but then her husband saw something big, upright, walk past their balcony. And he showed me, you know, exactly the window. He, he looked out and saw it and just saw something hairy move. And uh, their balcony sits any eight feet off the ground anyway. So whatever he saw above that had to be taller than that. Mm-hmm. Uh, very credible, very credible. And then, like I said, she brought her neighbors over and they're telling me stories and, and all of their stories were Bigfoot. So she is the only one who saw this black wolf thing, whatever that is. And, mm-hmm. and you know, you could guess is, is it dog man? Is it just a big black dog? I, I don't know exactly what it was. I think she said werewolf, but she did say it was, you know, quadrupedal. Yeah. That's what she said to me. She said the werewolf thing is what kind of you know struck me when she was talking about it. And, uh, uh, no, she, I, I guess I'll say it. She, she works, she has her own beauty shop mm-hmm. and yeah. she has a lot of people coming in there. And, uh, yeah, she is a great witness. She is yeah. fe- fearless about talking to people, about asking them if they've seen anything. She's just a super nice lady too. Yeah. So, and, yeah. Uh, well, I think, I think there's a lot of possibilities there. Maybe when the weather does, you know, going into the fall things might, it might be good too, because, you know, pick. You know, the, these upright canine sightings do seem to pick up in the fall, late summer uh, overall. Now, as far as what other parts of PA, of Pennsylvania, you know, I don't know. I mean, it, it kind of has been somewhat slow. Uh, I have Sean looking into a, a case up in Center County again because... That area around Rothrock State Park, I don't know what it is, but we've had a couple of upright canine sightings and a couple of Bigfoot sightings. Now, this involved two residents that have lived on their this property for a long time, and uh, they live right outside of the state park, but they have been hearing very loud and deep growling sound near their home at night and they had one night where they were in bed and heard what basically sound like he described as tree knocking 
So I don't know what's going on there. So Sean doesn't live that far from there. So he's supposedly supposed to get a hold of them. Uh, I may have to follow up with them so they know to talk to him. But mm-hmm. that sounds interesting. Of course, if Butch was wasn't on the men, he he'd be up there. So, uh, but Troy was up there while Butch was uh, incapacitated, and he was up there following another case in in Rothrock State Park of an upright canine and. Uh, you know, we're still working on that. So uh, there's a lot going on there. Uh, of course, I've been talking to Stan Gordon, and he's been getting a, a he's been getting a lot of reports in Western Pennsylvania. Yeah, I saw. Uh, was it him or or Altman or was it Sean? Somebody was talking about a uh, a recent Bigfoot report that rolled in from out there. Yeah, Altman's been working out in uh, well, him and Stan both. That Armstrong County area has been pretty heavily reported for several years now. And I had gotten a report from about five years ago where this aggressive, big, what they think was a Bigfoot, was throwing rocks at people fishing on the Allegheny River. And uh, I've heard that story before. Because now this area was what they called... Uh, uh, North Buffalo, which is just uh, west going towards Pittsburgh from uh, some of the other areas from which we've gotten reports. Uh, uh, Kit, uh, Kit Tanning area and uh, Ford City. <clears throat> so, I mean, it's an area that's hot. It's It always has been. Yeah. Yeah, between all the sightings they get out there and all the festivals they have, I'm I'm uh, slightly jealous. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't uh, so bad last year when I was getting a ton of sightings here. I was like, ah. I know you were busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah but this, you were this busy. year it's just really slowed down. Now it could just be the heat's keeping people up from outside, you know. And well, if, if you're not outside, you're not going to see stuff. That's it. I mean, I think the heat has been a hindrance because. Of course, people that, you know, go out on outings and stuff, they're not going out in this heat. Right. So, um, I don't know. So, to, Tobias, uh, have you gotten anything further as far as wing reports? Yeah, you know, I, I, I do receive those still um, occasionally. Oh, first, uh, I, I should correct what I said earlier. I knew I was going to do this. I, I butchered that, that lady's ghost story. So she was actually on the stairs, and she lost her balance, and she felt phantom hands catch her. And that oh. was, yeah, that was her big. That's wild. Uh, yeah. yeah, right, which is a, a much more more interesting story. Um Anyway, as far as winged creature reports, you know, I I don't even know that we covered all of the entering uh, interesting stuff that's that's happened in uh, Woodstock. Yeah, honestly. why don't you why don't you talk about that because um, that is wild. I was talking well, I was talking to that producer today about that, mm. uh, the one I let have you getting a hold of, and. Um, I told her about the Woodstock sightings where people were describing something that looked like a Sasquatch with wing, basically. Right. Yeah, but go ahead and talk about that. Oh, sure. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, uh, February 22nd, 2019. So this is only a, a, a few months ago. Um, you know, a guy is coming home from Walgreens, which, by the way, I, I love this story uh, uh, narratively because of those mundane details i mean if you can just picture having to run out to the drugstore some night and then you're driving home from walgreens and the last thing you expect to see is this uh you know eight to nine foot tall uh hairy humanoid with 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 leathery bat-like gargoyle wings you know um and so yeah i mean literally this guy's just running errands and uh he uh, happens to live in the vicinity of the Dewfield uh, Conservation Area in in Woodstock, Illinois, which is you know it's a pretty expansive area, uh, you know thousands of of, of acres of of um, just wetlands basically. You know I've, I've I've been out there and 
And there's a, a good amount of, of tree cover and stuff, but I mean that's what swamps are. They're just you know they're they're muddy ground with with a few feet of water and a bunch of trees, and that's most of the the Midwest, at least like Wisconsin and, and Illinois and Missouri, we're just a big swamp. <laughs> And well, we're a big swamp that freezes sometimes. Mm. <laughs> and um, so, you know, he he is driving home, and it's it's dark out, and in his his headlights, he sees this thing, you know, cross from the area of Dewfield uh, uh, Pond, the the conservation area, uh, across the street in front of him, and he says it looks like what I just described. You know, it's like this eight foot tall, um, you know, hairy, uh, humanoid with, with, uh, leathery, you know, membranous bat like wings. And, you know, he sees it for a few seconds, but really it's, it's dark enough out where, and it happens, you know, relatively quickly. So he doesn't really see it outside of the area of illumination from his headlights. Um, but you know, he's shocked to say, the absolute least, you know, I, I, I know you spoke to him, Lon, and, and, and I talked to him too. And, you know, I'll tell you, it was, it took some convincing to get Emily and I down there. And it's, it's not that we didn't want to go, you know, this guy was scared, um, not just of what he had seen, you know, but sort of, uh, as a, a, a sane, rational person, like he knew, what this kind of story could mean for his life and for his family. And so he definitely didn't want that to, to, to get out. And so, you know, I had to tell him a little bit of what we're about and, and, you know, talk to his wife and explain to her a little bit of what Emily and I are about and how we do things. And, and, uh, and, and they agreed to, to let us come down and, and we, um, uh, they were nice enough to take us out to the sighting areas. So we walked around Dewfield Pond, and um, it's it's an interesting area. Uh, like a lot of Illinois outside of Chicago, it is a fairly natural area. You know, it's 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 got houses and stuff, but you don't have to go very far before it's just fields and 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 wetlands and forests and and that's it. Um, and anyway, so they they. They took us around and, and, and we were looking at things and I found one particularly interesting footprint. And, you know, it's it's on the the website because we went back and updated uh, mm-hmm. the um, original article on there. Um, and I'm not talking about the one that, that he had sent, you know, with his or, or that they had sent it at, at some point, like either with or immediately following that initial report. And I, this was a, a, a different photograph. So there, it's just one footprint. And it looks like uh, in elongated, uh, you know, human print in in ice. And it, it was in ice, so the absolute best we could do was just take a picture of it. You know, you're not going to get a cast out of, out of ice or anything, unfortunately. Um, not under those weather conditions either. It was cold and, and raining, and and uh, everybody was a trooper for, for just being out there, honestly. And so... Uh, we, we, we take some pictures of it and I, I went ahead and, and did my best to outline it, you know, just using basic like Microsoft paint level technology. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'll be damned if it didn't look like, uh, it had, you know, articulated toes on this footprint. And the only thing that came to mind, you know, cause I have to try to, uh, skeptically assess everything we find. The only thing that came to mind for this was, you know, because it had been relatively warm off and on, you know, like we were there in, in early March, which was just a, a couple of weeks after the, the sighting took place. Um, and, you know, February and March in in, in this area, uh, the, the weather is pretty, pretty swingy. And, mm-hmm. and so there had been some relatively warm days. And, uh, and so the only thing I could think of is maybe somebody had been wearing those running shoes that, you know, that have the individual toes right. on it. Right. And yeah, and had left this print there and then maybe like the sun had melted it and made it misshapen. Uh, so it was extra long and, and weird and, and whatever. And I mean, I can't, I don't know that that didn't happen, but I can say this. 
there weren't any other prints around it. Uh, it was there by itself. Uh, and so I, I don't know why, if that was the case, uh, in all of the terrain that was exactly the same all around it, there weren't any other similar prints left. Now, I think we all know um, how relatively commonplace it is, uh, you know, say, for a Bigfoot researcher to find three prints in the, the middle of the woods that start seemingly at an arbitrary place and then go nowhere. And it's, it's, it's a strange phenomenon. And, um, and you know, I, I don't know that that wasn't the case here, frankly, because I'm sort of at a loss to explain it um, with, with any, any uh, mundane sort of, of ex, uh, explanation, you know. Um, but, you know, it, 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 it didn't stop there as far as, uh, as, as Woodstock sightings, you know. Um, wasn't too long after that initial one. And, and this was, I mean, this was a, a, a big deal to me because this, this, this next one actually represented the first time that I had any kind of, you know, real physical proof of something weird happening that, that, that I could literally hold on to. And so we had this guy who, who contacted us, said he was outside of the, the Jewel Osco in, uh, in, in Woodstock there, which is literally right across the street from Dewfield Pond. It's right in that area. And he said... He was outside this this drugstore, um, second drugstore, which is actually close to the Walgreens, which is weird. I, you'd think that they would be in competition, but anyway. So he's he's standing outside of this Jewel Osco, and he's looking uh, towards this uh, towards the McHenry uh, County Fairgrounds, and he's you know he sees this thing that he describes as basically what the first witness saw, and um, only difference being he says that the thing he saw had, uh, had bright green eyes. And he said that the, the thing charged the fence. And I mean, he was scared. He was so scared that he called 911. And I know he called 911 because I submitted a FOIA request to the um, McHenry County Sheriff's Department, who were really helpful, by the way. And they sent me the incident uh, detail report showing that he called 911, uh, showing that an officer responded. Uh, the officer, you know, uh, conducted a brief investigation, did not find a monster. But the fact remains, this guy um, was so disturbed by what he saw that he called 911. And that's not something people generally do, you know, very lightly, especially exactly. these days. Uh, so I was I was pretty impressed by that, you know. And of course, that's up on the the website as well. Um, I actually went ahead and redacted some of the information. It's literally only people's names that I've I've taken out. You know, if somebody really wanted to track this down and harass these people, they probably could. Do I think they? Do I think that anybody should? Of course not. Um, if you're a friend of mine. Uh, thinking about doing that, um, think again. You know, maybe reconsider it if you want to still be my friend, mm -hmm. uh, because I, I I think that people deserve privacy. Right. Um, you know, so but I also have a responsibility to present you know any evidence that I find. So I'm trying to you know get the 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 best of both worlds. So we've got a slightly redacted version of the actual uh, incident detail report sent to us, um, and then. Sort of a, a, a tangentially related incident happened in, in early March. I was contacted by a woman uh, who said that she was woken up by like a sinister and monster-like growling out, outside of her home. And so, you know, initially, of course, like anybody, uh, you know, I just considered that maybe it was some kind of, of wild animal or, or, or something. She was home by herself. Her husband was away on business while, while this happened. And, you know, but actually after, you know, talking to her and, and getting, getting sort of the, the whole story, um, she, she didn't find any physical evidence. She, she never really went out and looked for any. Um, but, you know, after having her describe that growling, I mean, I don't think that she would have uh, reached out to me um, just just over, you know, a couple of coyotes fighting over a rabbit or something. Mm -hmm. uh, I, the way she described it was more uh, sort of demonic, you know, like she, 
and and I you know I, I I know you guys know this, but for everybody listening, witnesses will often really struggle to describe their encounters with you know seemingly impossible phenomena to the point where the often the best they can do is uh, try to put things in uh, just add context by 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 you know using uh, any uh, popular culture or or anything and so. She basically uh, was comparing it to, you know, uh, the sound of a monster or demon, you know, growling from a movie, for instance. Mm. And so, um, again, you know, that that I don't know that it's related to these these sightings, but I, I felt like it was important enough, especially considering how vehemently she uh, defended the idea that it wasn't something normal and, and how... Um, you know how much she struggled to really describe it. I mean, if it if it was something like a a, a dog or a coyote or something, um, I I feel like we would have figured that out pretty quickly. Uh, but that wasn't the case. So I mean, who knows? Honestly, well, you know, and the local media got a hold of the story too. Oh yeah, and I mean, they didn't particularly help any. No, but, you know, this is what I fear the most when we get these sightings, in particular what happened in Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the time, the media is not that helpful. And when they do try to do a story, they kind of, you know, they try to sensationalize it to a point where, it, you know, it's, it's all ridiculed. And uh, though, they're, they're, you know, the, in, in the case of Chicago, we were lucky enough to have Vice.com do, do an interview with a witness and it was well done and it, it, it really did you know it really did kind of put things out there in, in right. the context it should have been put out so um but yeah that's always a problem when you get media involved it, it really is and i you know i kind of cringe when i start getting questions from people from the media <laughs> oh yeah yeah well i i i think i told you guys uh about this at the time, you know, I, I, I had this journalist from whatever paper down there contact me, you know, and, and she was, she said something like, you know, Oh, Hey, you know, can you put us in contact with these, we, these witnesses or let us come with on an investigation or, or something. And, you know, and then she really tried to sell it by saying like, you know, I really think our, our, our readers would enjoy seeing that and you know i'm just like they're they're already enjoying seeing it <laughs> by going to my website so yeah yeah I, you know i don't need some uh, uh journalists coming in here trying to sensationalize everything with no regard for what effect that has on people's lives like it's it's just wrong and 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 ultimately i had to tell her to to kick rocks because you know I, I wasn't gonna have it but yeah yeah you're absolutely right it's it is a mess yeah, I've got a local journalist who's pretty, you know, interested and keeps calling me. Is you know, I want to, I want to go with the, on out with a on a Bigfoot investigation with you. I want you to show, me, you know, show me what you do and this and that. And mm -hmm. I said, I said, well, the problem is that a, I don't know when they're coming. It's not like I can warn you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, b, a lot of these people, you know, you you have to drag this information out of them. They're yeah. they're not happy this happened. You know. If it's and if it's on their property, they don't want it publicized in any way. They don't want people coming on their property looking for Bigfoot. So it's it's a really delicate situation. And uh, I, I'm with Lon. I do not think media, in most cases, helps at all. You wouldn't have to. It wouldn't have to be somebody from York, would it? It is. Yeah. Well, that figures. Because um, <laughs> I've got I've got somebody. I, I think he's more freelance than anything, but he's always bugging the hell out of me and uh you know i, I do kind of get a little frustrated from the media sometimes but you know it, well, it's good in one respect but in most respects it's not yeah the, the problem is once it <clears throat> it doesn't matter what we say because they can clip out and take things out of context and they don't have any real you know the, what we do we do this daily you know i i know lon you do it i know tobias you do this daily this is our mm -hmm. lives and it's something we're very passionate about to them, it's a passing story. Mm. So if they don't get it quite right, they don't care. You know, it's just another day for them, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, part of the, the reason that we started the Singular Fortean Society 
um, was because of the almost total lack of credible media sources for this information. I mean, you have a handful of really solid, uh, uh, you know, blogs and 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 uh, websites and and stuff. But if you're talking about people just reporting the news, it's garbage. Mm. You know, it's it's all garbage. And I was like, well, who's who's reporting the 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 paranormal news? Like like who's who's putting the like the journalist hat on and 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 covering uh, paranormal news like people cover science news? You know, like some somebody needs to do that. So yeah, it's it's a huge problem. <laughs> so um, I don't know. Is there anything else you wanted to cover, uh, Tim? I mean, th- that you wanted to mention? Um, well, um, I talk to witnesses every week on Strange Familiars. People want to tune into that. Um, writing a new book with Joshua Cutchin. It's called Where the Footprints End. And we are digging into all of the really, really weird stuff, like disappearing trackways and single footprints people find. You know, that's a phenomenon that just drives me crazy. You know, J.C. Johnson and I were pretty tight, and he used to tell me about all these these trails he would follow that just completely end. Mm-hmm. You know, we're talking about Sasquatch for wings. And you know Linda Godfrey has been talking about this, bat, this Sasquatch Bat squatch or whatever it is that you know from lacrosse all and other areas of Wisconsin for years. I don't know if it's related to that, but go ahead. I digress. Oh no, it's just it's. I mean, even locally, some of these very you know somewhat locally famous cases, I should say, from the seventies. Uh. If you dig in, you know, the, there was one in Delta where there was it was a two mile trackway they found pretty incredible. Uh, trackway across the barbed wire fence. They they got hair off of it. They found a rabbit that was killed along the way. They think that that uh, whatever it was killed a rabbit, and uh, just ended in the middle of the field. <laughs> Footprints just right up in the middle of the field. So you know it it's happened locally. It happens everywhere. It's it's uh, it's very very strange. But uh, there's all kinds of phenomenon associated with it that is really really bizarre. You know, and and this is the stuff that you know stands documented for however many decades. You know, Bigfoot holding glowing orbs and people seeing them. You know, literally blink out of sight. And of course, the whole predator thing. People are reporting. They say they you know they'll they'll kind of phase out, look like the in like the uh, camouflage creature from the predator, and uh, just all kinds of bizarreness associated with with these uh, creatures, including, you know, all kinds of unexplained lights and so forth. So it's two volumes Josh and I are writing. So there's, there's no shortage wow. of material out there. Is there... <laughs> well, you, you know, the um, one thing that's fascinated me over the years is the increasing sightings of Bigfoot or whatever along the, the Susquehanna River, especially on the west side. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're just, the whole way down into Maryland, it seems like there's a lot of sightings and a lot of evidence has been coming forth uh, over the years. I mean, and you've reported a lot of it. Uh, you've got a, you've got a research area that's right along the river, and uh, it, it does seem to be a phenomenon. At, at you know, hot or cold, but it does happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. In fact, the, the you know I write about uh, in Woodknock Volume Three that the series that David Webley put out. I write about Delta. Um, just eight square miles down in Delta and the, the incredible number of sightings that are in that area. And uh, the kind of Wingo stuff is really right across the river from that and just yeah. a little bit south. I mean, so what's going on there? You know, it's it's really not far from that. And, you know, there's another area that does intrigue me. That I, I've been hearing things about this area for a long time is Misho's uh, State Forest. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For whatever reason, the, the past... I'd say decade. I have been getting sighting reports out of there for Bigfoot and upright canines. And, you know, I, I have already had several reports because uh, there's a major highway that goes right through the state forest, mm-hmm. right near to Caledonia, which is Route 30 with Lincoln, Lincoln Highway. Right. And I have had people telling me for years that they would literally see Bigfoot coming out of the woods, picking up a dead deer roadkill, sling them over their shoulder and taking them back into the woods. I I know of at least three sightings like that. It was right 
behind Caledonia in, in Michaud there where I first became convinced that there's something to these tree structures. Before yeah. I, I saw this one, I was like, eh, maybe, maybe not. And uh, I was on the oh, side. Oh, that's of, right. You did see one, didn't you? That's right. I saw a huge one in yeah. the tree structure I'm talking about in yeah. there um, on the side of a mountain. And I, it had to be made with hands. There was a living tree that was bent into this and, and parts of it wedged together. And I'm looking at this thing. And I'm like, you, you know, if, if people did this, they needed a ladder. Right. So who's bringing a ladder up on the side of a mountain, you know, off of a trail? It, it just it was bizarre. And that's the first one that really caught my eye and thought and it made me think, well, I think there's something to these uh, tree structure things. It's uh, Michaud is a really creepy place. When you start getting into the, the weird reports, I believe I've just been saying the whole forest is haunted with the number of reports that are yeah. coming out there. New and old. Uh, I, I shared that one uh, upright canine with you that I received recently. It was an old report, but it was the first time she ever talked about it. And she was so emotionally affected by it that she was crying on the phone with me when she was talking about it. Mm. Yeah, the, the the upright canine, of course, Butch and I got one, too, uh, in the area just above Caledonia, going into um, those cabin areas as you're going up to Laurel Lake. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, that, I've had a lot of weird sightings along that road. Um, I don't know. You know, and Misha is kind of a strange... I mean, it kind of basically extends from Mount Holly Springs south unto... The Maryland line, basically. Yeah, it covers it's a, a lot. huge area. I mean, yeah, it goes all, I guess, almost into Columbia County, or, or is it in, but anyway, yeah, it's, it's just a huge forest. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've received, I've received weird sightings up along, uh, you know, Mount Holly Springs, up in that area, Big Spring down south, uh, in Newville, in there, that's Cumberland County. And, you know, in the springtime, uh, those limestone creeks are are populated by a lot of fly fishermen, mm -hmm. and they see a lot of things in there. Yellow breeches area, so um, yeah, that that whole state forest is really strange. You know, I got chased out by something there many years ago, about twenty five years ago. Um, I was up at the reservoir in Caledonia. I don't okay. know if you know where that's at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, I was actually fishing because I used to fish along the uh, kind of Cochic for many, many years. You know, I used to do a lot of fly fishing in there. So I was up there fishing and something came barreling through those weeds and there are high weeds there. Middle of the day came barreling through that. It sounded like a damn rhinoceros coming through there. I got out because I wasn't going to sit there and, and be worried what it was. It was. I know it wasn't a bear. So who knows what it is? Yeah, but, uh, I, I've taken three different reports of three different people, and they've all they've all met me out there and took me to where it happened. So it's been really neat. And it's kind of like one on the north end, up at uh, White Rock. So it's just north of uh, Michaud mm -hmm. in uh, in Cumberland County there. Mm -hmm. um, but it's right. I mean, the woods connect to Michaud from that. Along, that was along the Appalachian Trail. Uh, somebody in the middle of Michaud, and then someone down the south side, even south of Caledonia. And uh, they were all very, very similar stories that involved being screamed at by something. Now, none of them saw anything, but they, it scared them all so much that, that you know, it left an impression, uh, you know, for good on them, you know. Well, and that's right. That's one thing I did mention, that the Appalachian Trail goes right through Michaud. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. uh, you know, that whole area of Pennsylvania up into Harrisburg and around that area, Camp Hill and such, where the Appalachian Trail goes through, have had a lot of weird incidents over the year, especially up around Camp Hill. Yeah. Uh, that's, you know, people that don't know, that's what the area where they call the West Shore. And uh, there have actually been some deaths on that on that Appalachian Trail in that area. Yes, there have. Uh, th there's been some, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's, you know, maybe not paranormal, but you wonder. It, well, it's like you were telling me about, uh, you uncovered that story about the guy uh, who was wrapped in chains and dumped in the Cadoras yeah. you know, right, right by the furnace there. So, yeah, it's not a paranormal thing, but, 
you know, when the, a lot of these other weird kind of events start happening in the same places, you go like, okay, is, is there something to this? Because a lot they found a lot of bodies up around the Cador's Furnace in the 70s. Yeah. And uh, there's been a lot of uh, really bad, you know, human uh, crime on the AT coming through that area. You're right. Mm, 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 mm. So uh, you're writing a book, too, uh, Tobias. Why don't you tell people about it? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. So I, uh, I, I decided I'd try to explain my experience, I guess, uh, investigating the, the Lake Michigan Mothman sightings. And, and uh, I, I wanted to explain it to people um, in a way that would help them make sense of it. You know, not necessarily in a way that is going to convince them of my opinion, although I like to think my opinion is pretty reasonable. So hopefully, you know, maybe it will. But more in a way where uh, it'll just help organize the information we have um, and give them all of all of the relevant details that, you know, I, I, I can give them for for each sighting. Uh you know, because it's it's difficult. I, I meet people all the time who have strong opinions on this, you know, uh, Lake Michigan Mothman uh, case. You know, they got really strong opinions on it and they don't know, uh, you know, like they they might know a third of the cases, you know, we've 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 covered like they might be familiar with 30 percent, maybe. Maybe. You know, or or maybe they just know the 2017 sightings, mm-hmm. you know, but if you don't know uh, the historical sightings, if 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 you don't, uh, you know, understand what other external uh, phenomena might have been influencing things in Chicago in 2017, if you don't know, you know, what's been happening in in, you know, since uh, late 2018, early 2019, you um, if you don't know about all of the associated high strangeness cases that we've received in those areas, um, then, you know, frankly, you don't, uh, you just don't know this case. And, and, and that's what I want to try to, to, to bring to people. You know, I, I know people hate this, so I, I apologize in advance if you, if arcane radio gets any flack for it. But the fact is, if you compare the phenomena that we have been investigating, you line it up with the associated high strangeness and, and, and everything else involved, and you compare it to what people were talking about, you know, from, uh, from 1966 to 1967 in West Virginia, um, you know, I, I, I think it would be difficult to make the argument that they are more different than they are similar, because they seem pretty similar to me. Yeah. I think you're uh, you're being a little generous, Tobias. I think a lot of these people who are commenting are really not familiar at all. They're familiar with someone else's opinion on <laughs> cases. Honest, no, honestly, I think oh, that's... Oh, yeah, we no, all know who right. that is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're right. I just... Uh, I, I'm nothing if not diplomatic, but yeah. You, I and mean, you're, you're, you're being generous, and that's fine. That's That's probably, you know, that's the kind way to be. Right. <laughs> yeah, uh, just, just so they don't, they don't read what we write about it. But uh, yeah, you right. know, w- between ourselves. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's 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 all private. But uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I thought if I could get this this book out and just sort of lay everything out, um, then you know, uh, anybody who wants to to have any opinion on this investigation and talk to me about it. Uh, you know, instead of endlessly and repeatedly answering the same questions, I can just say, "Did you read the book?" Right. Because <clears throat> the answer is in there. there so you go. Just read, just read the book. Well, I've seen I'm, you answer. I'm those also questions. doing a follow up too on. Well, it's it, it it's going to have some of the later stuff mm-hmm. as far as the, the wings humanoid sightings, but I'm going to be doing a flying cryptid book, which. After my surgery, I'm probably going to start getting serious into it. So cool. I've already warned the publisher. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to work on that. So all three of us have got projects going on, which is great. Cool. I mean, I don't think there are many, many teams that have at least three people <laughs> writing books about things that they're experiencing. Yeah, yeah I mean, probably not. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm, this is a, I'm very, very proud and happy to be part of this group. I think you, you put together a good group of people, me excluded. I'm not even including myself. In that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> well, we all try. I mean, I, like I said, in the intro, we're a well-rounded group. We've got a lot of years of experience in, in, in this. Uh, we don't kind of rely on the other uh, people outside of our group to give us information about things. We do it ourselves and we stick up for our witnesses, which is something we heard a lot of gruff about during the, the Chicago sightings, as far as sharing witness information, which I just will not do. Amen. Uh, Amen. Yeah. That's, that's, I won't do it either. I, I, no. I'm, it's just, <laughs> Well, we've had the discussion before. It's just yeah. it's hard enough to get people to talk, and this is sensitive stuff. It's really sensitive stuff, and it's it's upsetting. Like I said, that that one witness who called me recently, she was crying, and she in no mm. way wanted to be identified at all. You know, mm. she doesn't want even a hint of it on her, and I understand. You know, so hey, I took the report. If people don't want to believe it, you know, what what can I do? But uh, you know, I report it as I receive it. Sure. Well, I mean, you know. I, I, I find it so predatory and it's 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 almost it's it's narcissistic, if not sociopathic, in some people's complete disregard for the fact that there is a human life behind this story, because for a lot of people, it's what can this story do for me? Um, and so, yeah, no, of, uh, I'm, I'm not going to let any, I'm, I'm not going to facilitate somebody taking advantage of someone for celebrity. Mm-hmm. Like that's never going to happen. <clears throat> mm. Amen. Yep. So guys, I, I thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, we're going to do this again. Uh, when Butch gets himself straightened out, maybe we get Sean to come on as well. We can, we can get into a lot of different things, but you know, I, I, I do believe things are going to pick up going later into the summer, into the fall. So uh, let's hope the weather re- cooperates with us. Right on. Yeah. Okay, guys. Thanks again for joining me. All right. Thank you, Lon. Yeah, I'll thanks, Lon. Mm-hmm. Now, if you have an unexplained encounter or sighting, feel free to contact me through the Fams of Monsters blog site. My new book, Alien Disclosure Experiences Exposed Reality, is available on Amazon.com. Just search my name, Lon Strickler, and all my titles will appear. Now, I want to express my deep sadness at the passing of my friend and colleague, Rosemary Ellen Guiley. Now, Rosemary assisted me during the Chicago Wing Humanoid Incidents in 2017 by following up a witness report verification and offering her insight and advice. She also lectured on the Chicago phenomena during her exclusive presentation at the 2017 Mothman Festival in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Now, Rosemary will be missed by thousands of her friends and fans. Godspeed, Ro. Now, there won't be no show next Friday since I'm, I'll be recuperating from surgery. So I want to again thank Tobias Whalen and Tim Renner for joining me this evening. And I want to thank you for listening to the show. Good night and have a safe and enjoyable weekend.